Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we'll have a look at how I've created this wolf in more detail. Before we begin, I've put the materials in the comments below so you can see the colours and the materials that I've used to create this piece. And if you like this video, remember to give it a like and subscribe for more tutorials to come in the future. Let's get started drawing the wolf. So to begin with, um, on a piece like this, I usually always start with the eye. It's a great starting point and it gives you something to work off and a good place to start. So the first thing I do is go in with a light pressure on the dark sepia color, go around the outline of the eye and the iris and get the shape that I want. And then you can go in with a harder pressure to get the color in there and the shape that you want. And then once that's done, I go into the iris with a warm gray one in small circular motions to get a nice smooth paper and then go in with the colors of the yellows and um, green colors in this case and make sure that I preserve the white highlight by going in at the start with the white Holbein pencil to make sure that you put in a wax resist so you're not getting any color into that white highlight because that's what's going to make it look realistic. So with fur like this, I used the eye as a starting point and then did the fur around the eye to build off and work my way around. So with fur like this, I start off with a warm gray one as my base color and then gradually move up to the darker colors. So when you're putting down fur like this, you always need to make sure that you're looking at your reference photo and you're going in the shape of the fur. So on a face of any sort of dog or um, wolf or animal, it usually goes around the face. So you need to make sure that you're depicting the right fur lines and the bone structure of the animal to make it look more realistic. So after my warm gray one layer, then I usually go in with the warm gray three and start getting darker. And then as you start to build up, you can sort of study your reference photo and get really familiar with it and you can see the different tones in there. So there are different blue tones, purple tones, yellow tones and some green tones in there. So I'm doing my fur lines and getting all of the fur colors in there and then glazing over really lightly with the side of the pencil with those colors of the yellow, purple, blue and the greens. So moving on to this fluffy ear, you can see that I've broken it down into sections. So I didn't want to go in and sort of do a whole base layer over the whole thing. So I just broke it down, which made it a little bit easier to do each section one at a time. So when completing a piece like this, you'll go in and complete a section and then move on to another section and then you can evaluate sort of where it's at and you may need to go into previous sections and darken them up and make sure that the values are all matching. So that's the reason I've sort of worked around and then you'll see me go back to certain areas and darken them up and then go back around and then do the same sort of thing and make sure that I'm always sort of assessing the values. So for the fluffy fur in the middle of the ear, I did go in with an embossing tool and put in heaps of embossed lines so that I could preserve those little white fluffy lines in the middle of the ear. I also did go in after I put in the darker colors, I went in with the Holbein soft white and I even went in a little bit with a scalpel just to pull out a couple more of those fur lines and make the ears seem nice and white and fluffy. So when completing the fur on the top of the head and also on the left hand side of the body and the side of the face and that sort of thing, it is sort of that um, salt and pepper black and white sort of fur. So when I'm putting my fur strokes down with the darker dark sepia colors and the delft blue colors and that sort of thing, I'm making sure to put my fur strokes reasonably far apart and not too close together because if you do them too close together it will look too dark and like a blank color whereas you want it to look like um, you know spotty black and white and you want to have little bits of white going in between there. When you're doing your fur lines as well making sure to put your pencil down and flick in the direction that the fur is going but every now and again you do sort of want to veer them off to the left or the right to make it look like they're crossing over because if you look at fur they're not actually all in a straight line like soldiers you need to make sure that you're sort of crossing them over 
and every now and again if you flick one back in the opposite direction this will give the effect that the sort of white fur is overlapping the dark fur and give more of a realistic fluffy texture. Then after I finished the eyes and the ears I moved over to the left hand side. So this is basically just because I don't want to be rubbing on the work that I've already done with my right hand because I am right handed. So I left the muzzle till last. So the most tedious sort of task with this was probably all of the fur on the left hand side that you're looking at now. It did take such a long time and a lot of blending and yeah lots of layers so making sure to go in with the lighter layers like the warm grey one and the um, warm grey three and then glazing in with the side of the pencil really lightly with the yellows, greens, blues and purples where you can see those tones in the fur and then going over with the harder colours like the Delft blue and dark sepia, a little bit of walnut brown as well to add in those darker colours and build up the different shadows in the fur. Finally moving on to the muzzle. So one of the main things you need to make sure you do is make those really really short fur lines on the muzzle because if you go in with long streaky lines it won't look realistic because if you look at animals they have really short fur on their face. So the last thing I did with this piece was the mouth and the nose. So if you want to see how I did the nose in real time, I've created a tutorial about that. So you can have a look on my YouTube channel. It goes for just over half an hour and you can follow along and see how I've done this step by step. Then the very last thing that I did was add in the whiskers. So nice and slowly taking my time, making sure to look at the reference photo, which way the whiskers are going and where I should place them. So once you have everything in and it seems pretty much done, this is when you can step back and look at the values and go in and get a bit darker where you need to and fix up all those little details. It is sometimes always better to step away and have a look the next day because you do see a little bit better with fresh eyes and when you have been working on it for hours and then you finish and have a look at it you may not be bothered to <laughs> fix anything at the time so it is good to come back when you're all fresh and raring for more and then you can finish off those final touches and get it all done. So if you do complete a piece like this or any of these tips or tricks have helped please let me know in the comments below or add me on Instagram and tag me in your pieces because I would love to see what you're working on. And if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials to come in the future and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Been a while since I forgot